born and bred in Canberra, um, but most of my family hails from northeast Victoria and a lot of the, my family members have farms, but more orchards, um, chestnuts, olives, things like that. And going through school, I wasn't entirely sure of what I wanted to do. I loved the outdoors. Um, I loved working on the farm, the school holidays on the weekends, um, resource management, sustainability, things like that. But I, I dabbled in all subjects, I suppose. I had this attraction um, for the national parks. And I think similar to Shana, the animals, and I suppose the diversity, I thought you could, you could, you could reach there. You, you know, so many jobs that I've heard about, or so many experiences within parks, including the firefighting side as well. Um, but as I made my, my way through school, I I ended up going to um, one of the colleges in, in Canberra, Narrabunda College. I was now a very student and to get in, you had to write a letter uh, and pick a subject that wasn't offered at your local school. And there was forestry and I thought, oh, this sounds pretty wacky, I'll give that a go. And I remember in my first week, one of my friends said to me, you know, you can actually change subject. You don't actually have to do the one you wrote on the letter to get in. I thought this is fabulous though. Um, so it, it really opened my eyes into another world, I suppose. Um, and I, I went on to, to ANU in Canberra there and did a Bachelor of Science, Forest Science. And I was lucky enough um, when I was near the end of my degree, uh, I, I reached out. I didn't really know who to talk to. There wasn't, I suppose, this connection that that we're seeing now um, from the ag industries and the forestry industries to our local um, local schools. I, I reached onto someone in forestry court going, hi, I'm Elle, I haven't really done much. Um, and before you knew it, I, ha I had a part-time job in Tumut and off I went, I've never looked back. I think, um, I suppose the first point would be all the way throughout my education from when I started school, I suppose until now, um, and I assume into the future, I'd pick myself as more of an all-rounder as, um, as opposed to an absolute specialist. So originally I, um, I wanted a, a degree that, yes, science-based, environmental-based, but that would fill me with a wider skill set, not just fixated on one thing because I thought that that would give me the greatest amount of opportunities later on. Um, so picking the forestry degree, it's, it's funny, once I got into the workforce, I realised how different the current, um, the current course is uh, to what a lot of my colleagues did maybe 20 years ago. And it was a lot more practical. And I suppose this lends itself to John's point, times are changing. Back then it was purely focused on the practical elements of it. Um, but when I did it, there was a, it was a lot more research-based and it, it had, um, yeah, there were a lot more research-based, a lot more, um, it still had the field trips and things like that, but you had the economics and the politics behind it as well um, of, of forestry itself, not just this is how you measure and chop down a tree. So I think that was really interesting. Um, and from there, I think the most important thing when you're in that situation is to take every opportunity. So little courses that pop up, pop, pop up along the way, put your hand up, enroll in them, get out, get as much work experience as you can. Um, I think those really helped me along the way. So I'm currently a harvesting supervisor in Tumut. And what that entails is, um, I'm part of a team, there's about five of us. At the moment, there's a few more of us as we try and uh, get through our, our salvage program, harvesting as much of the burnt timber that was affected by the recent, the recent fires around the Tumut area. Um, but there's about five of us and it's our role to plan and implement harvesting operations in our local pine plantation. So what that entails day to day is, um, well, it, it involves quite a few things actually, um, from data interpretation to going into the field and mapping out areas, uh, using ArcGIS, the mapping system, to produce our plans, and then um, working with the contractors to achieve the best outcome we can, harvesting the timber and eventually getting it to our local mills for export as well, which we're doing quite a lot of. Um, so how do I get how did I get in here? I've been in harvesting about two, two years now. 
So not really a long time. And before that, I was in silviculture, which is essentially the establishment department. Uh, within silviculture, I was a competition control supervisor. So essentially eradicating weeds where we plant our pine. That's a long word for a, um, a, a weed eradicator. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, due to the scale at which we try and address the weed issues we have around here, uh, it was mainly helicopter based and some skitter based. Uh, so that was a, again similar, uh, going out in the bush, assessing areas, identifying weeds, um, organising our herbicide program and working with contractors. And there was actually, there was a lot of uh, reviewing of processes and learning from that as well. So we, we, did a, we do a lot of trials um, within the, the herbicide program and that flows onto our, in our planting programs and things like that. So it is a quite a dynamic space. And I'd say my favorite thing about the silviculture department is there's, there's three core um, functions. There's our site prep, so getting the ground ready. There's our competition control, eradicating weeds, and then our planting. But we all work together throughout the year. It's very seasonal. So you actually dabble in all of those departments throughout the year, which is really good. Um, but harvesting is, it, it's changing. We've, um, we've never, I don't think anyone's actually achieved a salvage program like we have uh, around Schumit. Um, we were the hardest hit in this area by the recent fires. So it's absolutely monumental what we're trying to do. Um, and we're very close to the end of it. So if we get through, there'll be a, there'll be a lot of learnings to share, which is quite exciting. Probably not as structured as John's there. That sounded very impressive, actually. I'm quite jealous. Um, I suppose within within our business, for example, um, I'm part of various groups, women in forestry. So I suppose stems from forestry is traditionally a very male dominated industry. Um, but as part of this change that we've seen in the last probably 10, 15 years, uh, there's a, a huge population of women in the workforce, not just in office roles or management roles, things like that. Actually truck drivers, um, harvest machine operators, pilots, things like that, um, firefighters. As part of our day-to-day -day jobs, everyone within Forestry Corporation also has a role within firefighting. Um, so women in forestry, um, but I think the networking not as structured as I suppose John's initiative there, though we have the opportunity to travel quite a bit uh, with firefighting. And from there, you're meeting people in other regional locations um, in similar operational roles. And, and like mentioned, you know, it's so easy just to pick up the phone, um, have a quick chat, ask some questions, because they've got so much insight in a, in a different location. This is how we handle that situation. Oh, great, we'll do that down here. Um, but I think what's also really important in the industry of agriculture is it's important to have within the network people of different ages. So John touched on their, you know, the younger guys coming together, um, partnering with, with the other people in the industry. Um, I think that's so important. Um, especially as you know, younger people coming into forestry, there's so much experience, and quite often it's a lot of family experience. You know, we've had generation after generation after generation work in forestry in Truman or in Tumbarumba, somewhere like that. Um, and to be able to to get to know these people on it, whether it be on a fire line in the bush, um, through one of your other roles, and stay in contact and learn from them. And I think it's really important to, to have the initiative to ask lots of questions, you know, even if it's a, well, no questions is silly a question, um, but then they love to teach. And, you know, I think it's so important to share, share the knowledge before these people leave our industry as well. I think these roles require, um, I'd say people management skills as a whole. There's a lot of our roles are based on managing relationships, you know, and everything else just kind of fits in under that. Um, so interpersonal skills are very important. Um, I suppose focusing more on the harvesting supervisor or a forester as such, 
Um, in addition to Shana's, I'd say that um, computer skills or ability and willingness to learn them is a huge one in today's world with, our, with the use of technology, not just computers to do Excel and Word and things like that and ArcGIS, um, but iPads, they're an everyday tool now for our mapping systems. You know, contractors all have them now, um, as well as drones. Um, that, that's a skill that's becoming um, quite popular in our industry as well. So that'd be a big one. Um, I suppose this is a version of Shana, she touched on there as well, but on the practical side, I'd say the ability to read the landscape. So they, they talk about this a lot through when you go through school or uni, but I don't, you don't need to go there to understand this concept. I think it's your ability to read the landscape and interpret what might happen, you know, what might happen in the future. If I did this, what are going to be the consequences? If we did it this way, what are going to be the consequences? Um, that's really important. Um, I would say that initiative is probably that attribute there. That's, that's probably a really big one, um, especially in the firefighting role. Um, you'll be given a specific task, or you'll be trained in that task, but initiative and willingness to, to go further, to learn more, to develop, that is absolutely, it's huge. Um, and, and with that comes rewards as well. Um, I'd say in harvesting, um, the technolog technological advancements that have happened in the last, or, you know, from 40 years ago, it's absolutely huge. Um, these days we can essentially program a, you know, $1.6 million harvest machine to almost cut the wood itself, uh, which is pretty exciting. You know, we can um, program it to say, you know, we want it to cut 10 different types of products out of one tree and it will methodically analyze that tree and allocate those products, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, drones are again, huge in forestry uh, for all of our, we do a lot of survey work with drones, um, forest health surveys, things like that, but also in firefighting. So a lot of our thermal imagery is done off drones or um, cameras fixed to helicopters. And I'd say, yeah, in an everyday space, iPads are absolutely huge and applications um, forestry has developed to go on them uh, for specialised mapping and information capturing. And it's so exciting, you know, people have this, people have, seem to have this perception that you're young, you know how to use it. It's not always the case. In some cases, I'd say we have an advantage, but when you've got contractors much older than you who've been in the industry since day dot show you how to use things, you know, the fact that it's actually reaching different people, different age groups, that's the really exciting thing. I think summing up everyone, I guess, um, primary industries is such a huge part of who we are as Australians. Um, it, it always has been, I think it always will continue to be, uh, especially as we enter a world battling climate change and somewhat taking resources. Um, and I think it's our responsibility as young people to get on board and actually shape our future. Um, it really is up to us at the end of the day. And I think you'd, you'd much rather do it in an industry where you can get out, discover things, um, work in a whole mixture of roles. You know, my role, for example, one day, yes, you'll be in an office, but the next day you'll be in a helicopter, um, flying around the forest, fighting fires, baiting dogs doing forest surveys, whatever it is, and you're actively taking part in shaping the future.